suicide squad or even taking somebody from the suicide squad and doing something with them individually or a couple of them or whatever. I, I have all sorts of ideas and we talk about it all the time. So I, I don't feel like I'm done with this villain verse yet, you know. There's no one better in the world to direct the suicide squad than James Gunn. This movie was rad. I loved it so much. So much fun. I, I want to take it from the top of how you went about assembling your Suicide Squad because there's so many characters to choose from. Like, how did you pare them down? Uh, you know, I just had to really kind of follow my instinct, but I did start with a giant file of all of these potential supervillains that I found from different places, from the DC wiki or, you know, comic book characters I actually knew or, or whatever. And then I made these photo, you know, these copies. What do you call it when you print up something off a printer? I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> I was like a photocopy, a color color copy of you know pictures of these characters from the comics, and I put them all over my walls, and then started figuring out who fit together because I, you know, unlike a lot of groups where you want everybody to kind of look like they belong together, this was almost about making a group of disparate individuals who look like they didn't belong together. Peacemaker looks like he's from some crappy 1970s TV show, and Ratcatcher looks like she's out of a Saw movie, and. Bloodsport is out of some grim, dark, you know, thing, and Polka Dot Man's out of an Alan Moore tale. So they're all from these different places and wanted to put them together and have this very disparate team of individuals that all looked like they had had their own history behind them. Were you given any parameters of like people you had to use or was there anyone that you wanted to and you weren't able to for whatever reason? Nope, no, none, no parameters at all. I think uh, at the beginning, when I first talked to Walt about doing the movie, I said, you know, listen, what's the deal? What do I have to do is, what do I have to keep from the first movie? And he said, nothing. And I said, do I have to keep that team? And he said, nope. He said, you can use none of them or all of them. He's like, listen, we love Margot and Harley. She's great. She'd be great if she was in the movie, but you don't have to use her. You don't have to use anybody. It could be a whole new team. It could be the same exact team. It can be whatever you want. And this is kind of where I ended up. I want to know what that conversation was and like, because they're, they're coming to you, they're saying, hey, we want to do a suicide, suicide Squad movie. And you're like, wait, like, sequel? Reboot? Like, what's right. what's the tea? So uh, what kind of conversations did you have there? And did you have any chance to talk to like David Ayer or anybody about those characters? David and I didn't talk until after it was known that I was doing the movie. And then since then, David and I have talked a lot about different things. So when they first came to me, it was really, it was about what DC project I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they brought up was Superman. And the second thing they brought up was Suicide Squad. So those were the, the first two projects. And then I had another project that they never brought up, never thought of. A couple of other ones that we talked about a little bit. People have talked about crypto. They know that that's a, I brought that up at one point. So there's different characters that came up that interested me. And I just, I just took some time and started sketching out what the different stories could be with these different characters. And it was obvious from the very beginning that Suicide Squad just captured my imagination the most. It was the most fun. And people are like, well, why didn't you do Superman or Justice League or whatever? And I'm like, I just really found this to be the most creatively fulfilling story. And, you know, I know someone's going to do a Superman movie again. I don't know that Polka Dot Man is ever going to get his story told if I don't tell it. So, oh boy. There you go. So <laughs> I needed to tell his story. I needed to tell Ratcatcher's story, you know? And I've sort of made my career off of telling the stories of the characters that people don't think they're going to have their stories told, but have something magical to me about them, at least. Yeah, that's the cool thing is I really didn't know anything about Guardians of the Galaxy and Suicide Squad. I did, but like not some of the more obscure ones that you picked out here. So this has been mm -hmm. really fun <laughs> to dive into. That was great, yeah. So how did you approach the idea of using those same characters? Because you kind of have to like, break them down and reassemble them as new, like what kind of conversations did you have with Joel and Margot and Jai about, hey, this is same guy, but not the same guy. Yeah, and Viola, I always remember Viola. Who's oh, kinda... and of course, Viola. Yeah, yeah uh, she's, so... she's a little meaner this time around, I think. <laughs> she is, I think, she, you know, really Viola's the antagonist. Um, she's pretty hardcore. For but sure. if you talk to Viola, how she looked at Amanda Waller, it's very much like what she is like in this movie. She's pretty hardcore. And Harley's pretty nuts. And I, you know, Margo and I talked a lot about Harley and how I saw her and how she saw her. I actually saw Harley's a little bit sweeter in some ways, I think, than she saw her. I, like a little bit more of a, a tenderness to her that hasn't quite been 
you know, seen. I think Joel changes the most, you know. Rick Flagg is definitely different in this movie. And that was a choice on the part of me and on the choice, you know, of on the part of Joel to give him a little bit more humor, give him a little bit more of a center. Mm -hmm. You know, I think at the beginning of this movie, there are two characters that have somewhat compassion and, and you know, emotion. It's him and Ratcatcher. So I think that he really becomes, in, in a way, a part of the heart of this film. He is, but he's also incredibly idealistic. He believes in what he's doing. He is, uh, you know, America's hero. And being able to, you know, as he goes through the movie, sort of have some of his ideals confronted in certain ways and having to deal with that. So yeah. I think that he really changed the most. I think Joel even used a little bit more of the accent in this movie than he did in the first movie. You give everyone like their individual, like, oh, I really want, I'm really invested in Rick Flagg now. I'm really invested in Peacemaker. And of course you're doing the Peacemaker show. I want to know what, what it was about Peacemaker where you were like, oh, there's a story here and I want to do like an episodic thing with him. Well, I think it's a number of things. I think that, you know, if you watch the movie, obviously, in the movie, no, some of the characters have, Harley gets a really complete story about herself. She gets complete art. Uh, Bloodsport gets a complete story. Rick Flagg gets a complete story. Rack Edger 2 gets a complete story. Like, they all learn something about themselves, sometimes good things, sometimes bad things. But Peacemaker is a douche. And he stays a douche, and he is an ass in the movie. But I think there's something below that. And John and I talked, we see a lot in flashbacks of where Ratcatcher came from and where Bloodsport came from. We don't get that with Peacemaker. And John and I talked a lot about the character, where he is, how he feels, how he is the one. You know, you think that Polka Dot Man's the one who's the outsider, but Polka Dot Man starts to feel a part of the group. Peacemaker has a harder time with that. He's actually the most disconnected of all those characters. And seeing that John, we scratched the surface of John's ability to act dramatically in this movie. It's mostly, you know, comedy and silly stuff. And I saw that ability in him and I wanted to explore that further and the comedic stuff um, and to give him a full forum. And also I think Peacemaker has a lot to do with where we are politically in this country right now. And that's part of what the show is about. We have Danielle Brooks, who's someone who in the show is very, very different from Peacemaker. And a lot of the show is about their friendship or lack of a friendship. So there's a lot of things that I think Peacemaker worked in to be a TV show. I saw you mentioned on, I, I think it was, uh, what late show did you do the other day? Kimmel. Kimmel. Anthony Anderson was there though. Yeah. Um, Kimmel, yeah, right. You mentioned something like, oh, we want to do another season. Is there like a plan in place to do multiple seasons of the show? You know, there's not a big plan in place, but it's, again, it's something that I would I would love to do. And I know that the cast would love to do. So we're, we're all, you know, we haven't been picked up yet. So we'll just have to see what happens from HBO Max. So of course you are the fabulous writer director of Guardians of the Galaxy. We love those movies. Um, what would you say is the biggest difference between approaching a Marvel project versus a DC project? I don't think there's much difference. I think that it's really about Guardians versus Suicide Squad are very different, you know? Mm -hmm. But I didn't go into Guardians making a Marvel first movie first and foremost. I went into Guardians making a James Gunn movie first and foremost. And I went into Suicide Squad, not making a DC movie, but making a James Gunn movie first and foremost. They're yeah. first and foremost my movies, and they're the same in that way. However, Guardians of the Galaxy is for is a, is, has a family film element to it. So I'm telling mm -hmm. that story to a lot of different people. When Rocket says to Drax, I'm going to shoot you in the face in the first movie and kill you, we don't, as an audience, think in two seconds he's going to pull out his gun and we're going to see Drax's face disappear. In this movie, the Suicide Squad, they say they're going to shoot each other in the face and they don't only really say it, they actually do it. Yeah. And we know it can, but even more so than them doing it or not doing it, we know that can happen at any time. There is a much bigger sense of danger for all of our characters in the Suicide Squad because we know all of them could die. Whereas in Guardians, yes, I do kill, I do, you know, obviously I killed Yondu and that type of things happens. I killed the big original group, but it isn't the same thing. We know most of them are going to make it out alive. At right. least the first two movies. Um, uh -oh. so, uh, so there's all, it's, it's different in that respect. 
you know. What's happening in Guardians 3? You'll have to wait and see. I'm uh, making it now. <laughs> can you, could you ballpark, do you have any idea how many people die in sui the Suicide Squad? Uh, overall people? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I think just in the Harley scene, I think she kills like 42 people that we see. So that's in one, that's in the one scene. So there's a lot. That scene is fantastic, by the way. Um, question, those little cute murder sea daddies. What do we call them? I love them. Cute murder, oh, the Clyrax. Oh, Clyrax. The Clyrax. Yes. Yeah, 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 King Shark's friends. Yeah, yes. Those are, those are some sort of alien life that obviously they picked up somewhere that they've been keeping alive in their aquarium, so. You're gonna put me on a whole nother thing, because of course I had, you know, my baby Groot, my Porgs, and now. Clyrax? <laughs> now my Clyrax, Clyrax, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so real quick, Guardians 3 coming up, everybody might die, who knows. Um, do you do you see that as your final, like, swan song Guardians, maybe last Marvel project? Yeah. Wow, but yeah, okay. I don't know, you know, the last Marvel project, who knows, but last, it's, it's, uh... I see it as my last Guardians movie. I'm a guy who never says never because I've seen too many people say never and be pulled back into the fray. So For I sure. won't say that, but I see it as being my last Guardians movie. I know Dave sees it as being his last Guardians movie and Dave and I are pretty much attached to the hip on those projects. So um, I don't, you know, I don't see me going on and, and doing any more after that. Yeah, well, they're exploring the heck out of those TV shows. I feel like they're gonna float one to you at some point. Yeah, it's just I'm doing Peacemaker. I don't know. Yeah. You no, know, I direct five of the eight episodes. Next season, I hope to direct all all of the episodes. So, uh, I, you know, it is, and and as you'll see, Peacemaker is a very very different show from anything that's ever been done in the superhero realm. It is about a guy first and foremost, um, and very very much secondarily a superhero. But it's still a big science fiction movie with tons and ton more action scenes than in any superhero show ever. So it's uh, it's really, it's just totally its own thing. I'm excited. Do you think we could get another Suicide Squad movie? Yeah, I think it's possible, you know, Suicide Squad or even taking somebody from the Suicide Squad and doing something with them individually or a couple of them or whatever. I, I have all sorts of ideas and we talk about it all the time, so. I don't feel like I'm done with this villain verse yet, you know? Well, I'm out of time, but I, I wanna say, I've been interviewing you for like a decade now, and oh this God. is my final interview, I think, at ET. So, no. that's coming, but uh, I just wanna say this feels like a big full circle moment for me. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ash, it's been a play. You know that I think that you're always a pleasure, and it's the best. You really are my favorite of everybody, so oh, thank, thank you. you. I'll talk that's to going you. in the real. Next step soon, I'll, I'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you very soon. Cut, that was great.